Uh, right now I am going to be testing my throttle position sensor, and I actually have two. They both spec out pretty much the same. So what I'm going to do is show you how to adjust your throttle position sensor on a bench. To adjust the throttle position sensor by loosening these two screws, as you can see, you can tilt it. That is going to adjust your starting point. Closed throttle below one kiloohm and have wide open throttle at approximately five kiloohms. And I have to hang my throttle off of the bench so that I can fully open and fully close it. That's why the camera angle is a little bit off the bench. Turn my multimeter to ohm scale and I'm going to manually set it for kiloohms. There, so now we're on the, the first kiloohms. Now this is only for the FS automatic. I don't know about the manual or the KL. Grab that pin and then the middle pin. Actually, we'll start off and we'll do just a base. Where I had it set was 0.67 and see if I can kind of get back to that ballpark. Yeah, about there, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. And as I'm adjusting it, you know, those ohms will go up and down as, as I move it. So what we want to shoot for is below one kiloohm at the closed throttle position. And that's very important because that has to do with your idle parameters. When you first turn the ignition in your basic pre-operating self-test, I, I call it a post, post because I'm a computer guy, your startup sequence, if that's out of spec above one kiloohm, it'll set a code. More specifically on the FS automatic, it'll set a 121 code. And yes, for all of you guys that are OBD2, oh, what's a 121? That's the, no, that's not a P0 something, that's OBD1 code, okay? And it's important to remember our base so that we kind of get around that ballpark when we hook everything up. That way we know that everything is making good contact. See, like right now. It's kind of going all over the place there. I'm not making good contact somewhere. Those numbers are not steady. There we go. Aha, now we're right in the range we wanna be. We're below one, and during wide open throttle, we need to be above five. So I'm gonna open my throttle wide open, see how far up we can get. Now I'm going to adjust this, see if we can take this closer to five. And it's approximately five, it's not above five, it's approximately five. So if we can get in into the 4.5 to five range, I'll be happy with that. And I'm tilted full open here. Let's see what that is. Wow. This TPS has to be tilted full open in order to get the right resistance. Up, oh, lost connection. Ooh, that went too far, huh? What is that? I had it drop out for a second. You see that? You see that drop out? God, I wish I had an oscilloscope. Well, I can't get it to do it again. Maybe it's just a connection issue. All right, well, it seems like full open is about as good as we're gonna get. Now, the problem with that is I am wide open right there. Four. See, it says it should be approximately five. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to test this one, and this is my original. And this says A3222, and this one is A4719. And I got this one off of a probe. Uh, this is my original, but this is a junkyard part. Now, the problem is, is that mine is almost behaving exactly like that, where I have to go full up in order to get the correct resistance. And it says, if not as specified, adjust the throttle position sensor. What if you can't adjust it to get near the spec? Uh, 4.0 is not approximately 5.0. Not when you're going between 1 and 5. That's, uh... <sighs> That's a pretty large deviation. That's 20% off. Well, shnikes. All right, one of my problems is that I was following the 94 diagram, this big blue book. I have the 95, and the 95 is different from the 94. I was following the wrong specs. The 95 is 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 closed and 3.4 to 5.3 wide open throttle. Resistance is 4.6 to 6 
and then you have down here some more tests that are not in the 94 and this is only for the FS automatic with EEC4 so basically what I found out was the 94 procedures were leading me astray I was right on matter of fact I'm gonna have to dial back my uh, throttle position sensor to the normal adjustment which is right in the middle and I've had a feeling something was not quite right there it's just because I was following the wrong procedures I have it back probed finally got it it's the middle wire which is the pink and blue and come over here we have 0.84 now I will push the throttle full throttle and this is just with the key on the engine does not have to be running for this 4.71 as you saw I still have to adjust my throttle position sensor down it's still out of spec right now on the closed throttle test I was 1.43 above the specification voltage. I am absolutely sure that I will be completely well within specifications for the throttle position sensor. If you ever talk to someone that's worked on a Mazda 626 and they tell you that adjusting the throttle position sensor is really simple, more than likely it's because they've been working on the V6 and not the four cylinder. The throttle position sensor on the V6 is located about right here. It is super easy to get to and adjust. It's right there. On the four cylinder, it's down there. You cannot get to that sucker. You might be able to get to that top bolt, but you're not getting to that bottom bolt. From the factory, there are screws. And <laughs> good luck with that. I replaced them with little bolts. And that was just to make my life easier, but you still cannot get at them unless you remove your intake. Let's say that you have an issue where your throttle position sensor is not getting enough voltage. The voltage that you get at the throttle position sensor comes from the ECU. It's a, uh, it's a reference voltage. It, it uses that reference voltage. Uh, the TPS does not generate voltage, so it has to get voltage somewhere. And that's a 4.5 to 5.5 reference voltage. And that's why your throttle position sensor voltage will never be above 4.5 to 5.5. Whatever your reference voltage circuit is, your throttle position sensor is not going to be able to go uh, magically above that voltage. It's like your 12-volt battery. You're not going to somehow get more juice on a line than what your battery plus voltage unless there's like some booster or transformer involved on that circuit the principle is the same throttle position sensor is not going to see more than what your reference volt and some sensors use resistors in order to lower that reference voltage but usually they don't bump it up so let's say that you're getting below specification voltage close throttle position 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 that's really low so let's say you're getting 0.1. Now there's there's two tests there, right? You have your closed throttle, which is 0.3 to 0.7. That's fairly low voltage. So the real test to see if your throttle position sensor is getting good voltage from the ECU is that wide open throttle test. That's where you're going to get your 3.4 to 5.3 volt, which is basically reference voltage at wide open throttle. Now let's say at wide open throttle, you're not getting enough voltage. You're down like one point to 2.0 volt obviously check your adjustment but if you can't adjust it that means that the ECU is having an issue with that reference voltage circuit and you and I'm not going to go into reference voltage issues look up scanner danner videos if you want to figure out how to fix low reference voltage more than likely if you have low voltage on that throttle position sensor coming from that reference voltage circuit you're going to have low voltage on many other different sensors in the car because they all share that common reference voltage. Lord help you to track down a reference voltage circuit. That sucks. But hey, there are videos out there that can help you get through that. I don't have one. Check out Scanner Danner. Scanner Danner's the freaking scanner to the manor. So that's what you would do if you're going to get too low voltage. I really don't think you're ever going to get too high of a voltage coming off of that reference circuit. If you do, you, you've got some serious issues and I have no idea where to start looking for too high of a voltage. Probably an interference directly from the battery shorting to a reference circuit somewhere. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of. Bad ECU. Putting out cross pins or, or something some kind of short somewhere not an open a short so that's what these tests down here are for you got your terminal voltage which is on this connector the low pin if you're looking at the connector straight in sideways and there's three pins it would actually be the lowest pin and i believe that is a that's a black with a purple stripe probably going to be the reference voltage circuit because this is the one that also goes over here to the egr valve position sensor intake air temperature sensor, engine coolant temperature sensor, pin 46, turbine shaft speed sensor, solenoid body, transaxle range switch. Yeah, that's the whole list there. 
that black with a purple stripe is going to be connector terminal C. Basically, you can get the same voltage here as you do on the ECU. But again, like I said, if you get a low voltage to that throttle position sensor and your reference circuit, that's when you have to pop out that ECU and get at the pins at the back and actually probe the physical socket on the back of the ECU to figure out why am I not getting the correct signal or voltage out of that. And that's where wiring diagrams come in handy. Yeah, like here it says PCM terminal 47 voltage. So how would you know what the heck is terminal 47? Well, you need the wiring diagram. And as you can see right here, here's terminal 47, goes right into the throttle position sensor. So when it says 47, that's what you're, those are the values that you're looking for on 47. And I'm not gonna go over that. Yes, it would make for a comprehensive video, but again, I'm not going to tear apart my entire engine and my, and my car and my ECU to demonstrate these processes to you. I'll describe them, but I'm not tearing apart my car just to show you how to do something. I got enough issues to deal with as it is. This video was just kind of one of those videos that was on the way. I had to take my throttle body off anyway, so as long as I had to have my throttle body off, I figured it would be a good time to, to check out my throttle position sensor, do a little video on that, diagnostics. So I hope you've learned a little bit about your throttle position sensor, how to diagnose a good one or a bad one, and um, especially find the right specifications for that thing. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you like the video, click like, subscribe, uh, share. Now I'm, I'm into the whole Google Plus sharing thing too. Catch you later. Cool.